That awkward moment when you click on a thumbnail of Arnold and you get this. Welcome to One Man, His Mic and His Glasses. This video is an update on the A-list celebrity muscle building protocol of German volume training. The traditional 10 by 10. German volume training originated in the 70s era. Not sure what country though. And this video will include some fairly recent research into the topic as well as further discussion of advanced volume training. And so the YouTube algorithm worked a treat on my last video. Thank you very much, YouTube. Here's a few words for the YouTube Skynet. PewDiePie. Carpool Karaoke, Football, Greg's, Jeff's, Tyson and Eminem, please anything the YouTube Skynet but this. Thank you to everyone who took the time to watch and comment under my last video. It was a gangbang of ideas. Is that the right phrase? So I understand that many of you will not have home gyms and you may not be able to implement this protocol now, but you may, for example, want to use some of the time you have to edit and plan your training cycles where you can effectively perform volume training or not, because this video is analytical in nature. I'm not telling you that you must use German volume training. I'm going to project some benefits and some disadvantages and you must apply it to yourself. We all have unique characteristics and needs. And so when it comes to the implementation of training, there is of course a high level of personal preference. As long as we have the training principles of progressive overload and consistency and all those things that I bang on about on this channel, we can grow muscle if only hair follicles work the same way. And we can of course build muscle using multiple rep and set ranges where mechanical tension, metabolic stress and muscle damage are key factors to think about within your training to stimulate muscle hypertrophy. And so importantly to start, when it comes to this high volume volume training, at no point should we say that it is better, for example, than higher intensity, lower volume training. That's not what I do on this channel to say that this is the best or the better method. And we have to try and be analytical when we approach it. And most certainly there are valid and legitimate critiques as to whether or not this is too much volume with too much stress, too little rest, but we are all different. We all have different needs and characteristics. And therefore I think it is useful to try and discuss higher volume protocols because some of you may want to use them, some of you may not. And that's absolutely what I'm trying to do in this channel to promote this critical thinking. And so let's do a reverse Harry and start with some research. A 2017 study or the year of John Wick 2. Two groups, one group trained with five sets of 10 repetitions, one group trained with 10 sets of 10 repetitions over six weeks. It was a mixture of compound and isolation work. And the results essentially found that the lower volume group, the five sets of 10 repetitions actually made greater muscle gains. So perhaps that junk volume principle kicks into our application and we can think about Brad Schoenfeld's dose response relationship to hypertrophy as this idea of there being a ceiling of volume where above a certain point extra volume is perhaps not effective. Results of our study suggest 10 sets compared to 5 sets per resistance exercise over 12 weeks is no more effective for increasing muscle strength and hypertrophy. Five months ago I did make a video where I specifically state that we have to take into account junk volume. There is an upper limit to volume similar to frequency, which could be considered junk volume. The exact amount of too much volume is still unknown in the current state of research. In addition, it's important to note you can build muscle using several protocols, a lower volume, higher intensity, aka heavier weight, and also higher volume, lower intensity protocols. However, the researchers state that it is the higher volume protocols which are more, inverted commas, optimal for muscle growth. Based on our findings, it would appear that performance of at least 10 weekly sets per muscle group is necessary to maximize increases in muscle mass. And so I think that this piece of research is highly interesting and it may be highly applicable, but it doesn't mean that we should not investigate German volume training as there were many limitations in this one piece of research. Again, we have to take research as a contribution to a knowledge base. We have to understand that this was just one piece of research and yes, it brings up many interesting ideas for further research, but it also had many limitations to it. For example, in this study, both groups undertook the same rest periods. And when it comes to the increase of muscle mass in any study, we're looking at calories. Calories absolutely influence muscle growth. And in this study, calories were not closely measured or controlled. The diet of the participants was not monitored, which may have confounded the results. You don't say. Also, unfortunately, physical activity outside the resistance training sessions needed to be controlled and monitored to reduce the risk of confounding the results. There was also no deloading period in this study following the volume training, for example, which absolutely could have affected 
the results from the volume training itself. And so the key point when we get any piece of research like this is not to dismiss 10 sets of 10. What we need to do is understand that this is a contribution to a knowledge base and we have to understand the nuance in any training concept and therefore we can investigate not just the traditional German volume training but also the further adaptations of German volume training such as the advanced method from for example Charles Poliquin where less reps are used. GVT is most likely not the holy grail of muscle building but it also should not be just disregarded as junk volume per se. And so we can think of German volume training as the traditional 10 sets of 10 and this more applies for the beginner and intermediate lifters who are thinking of taking on this protocol. And so it has a low amount of exercises performed in a session but a high volume and there are many aspects within G GVT which mean that it stresses your muscle fibers and so when we think about the exercise selection it's going to be the major compound exercises it's going to be the exercises which work a multitude of joints and muscles at the same time and the intensity is low around 60 percent for the 10 sets of 10 and that can be difficult for many people because as they're working through the first few sets that low intensity doesn't feel hard enough and so people are saying well is this a waste of my time but because of the large amount of volume and other tools that are used that I will get to it can actually be highly effective in challenging your body and stimulating those muscle fibers for hypertrophy and one of those tools that can be used is the tempo time under tension and with this protocol you may use a four second slow negative now time under tension is perhaps over pumped in terms of how effective it is per se for muscle growth but again it is another tool that you may use. And here is one example of how you can use a multitude of tools to stress your muscles. So we have a high volume, that is a tool. We have a lower intensity, but that is if you like countered by the time under tension. In addition, your rest intervals will be fairly low. And also in this protocol, you can use supersets. And so there's so many different variables and tools that are mixed together, if you like, in that mad science cauldron to essentially challenge your body. And another tool that's used is an explosive positive concentric contraction stimulating that nervous system for adaptations. And the rest can be somewhere in the period of 60 to 90 seconds and that will change depending on whether you are supersetting the two major exercises in the session or whether or not you are performing a set with rest then the next exercise and rest. And so the counterbalance to all these tools that are used to stress the body is your frequency which will be decreased with the traditional GVT method. And the method that I'm recommending referencing here is from Charles Poliquin. And the reason that I'm using Poliquin is for many reasons. Firstly, because he had a key role, if you like, in popularizing, if I said that right, GVT to the masses. And so I want to be very clear that there are many different ways that you can program German volume training. And many intelligent coaches will use their own little factors when they program it. But in this video, I am using examples from Charles Poliquin. I'm not a fan of stating specific muscle growth, as I've said on this channel before, because it can vary for each of us. And that's why when I make videos such as this, I do not promise you, for example, you're going to build a certain amount of muscle. I'm very careful not to do that. And in the advanced GVT, he says you can build around eight to 10 pounds of lean tissue. Poliquin has, and many other coaches in online articles do sometimes tend to overpromise specific results, which can be problematic. And so your frequency time will decrease. And if you look at the training split from Poliquin, you're only hitting these body parts fairly infrequently compared to, for example, a push-pull skip leg day split, where you may be working muscle groups more frequently. But again, due to the stresses that you're using in German volume training, you will have to decrease that frequency to allow the adequate recovery time. And so the disadvantage is, well, the sessions take absolutely ages. And if you work out in a busy gym and you've got that annoying person next to you, staring at you, wanting your bench, putting pressure on you, this may be actually hard to perform. And then if you're thinking about using the supersetting protocol, it may be genuinely impractical for you to be doing that in a gym where people, of course, need to share the equipment out responsibly. And again, the lower intensity may not be suitable for certain people, especially advanced lifters who do absolutely need a greater intensity even with all the other tools that are put in play to stress the muscle. And so that may also be a disadvantage to many people. And some people may just not like using lower intensity. Using, for example, a 60% one rep max for these major compounds just may not be something that connects with you. And that's completely valid. And so this is a very basic German volume training split that Poliquin recommends. And this is more for the beginner intermediate lifters that are thinking of using this method. And you can find these examples and these articles for free on the tin 
internet. And just to add, at the end of his sessions, he does add some accessory work, just as accessories or finishers for the session, if you like. But your main focus in the session are those two major compound exercises where you are hitting the 10 sets of 10. And so that exercise selection is an example from Poliquin, but you do not have to use those exact exercises. Here is a variation with different exercises working the same principles that you may use, for example. And so this can be performed for six weeks, six five-day cycles. And then there's a phase two of this beginner intermediate program over the next three weeks where the reps slightly decrease to six to eight. But here's the interesting adaptation that I want to project in this video, and it's advanced German volume training. Now, this is more for advanced lifters, upper intermediate lifters, or people who feel like they are competent lifters and the 10 by 10 just does not connect with them. You can consider German volume training, interestingly, using some slight tweaks. And so we can instantly think back to that piece of research where the lower repetition volume training was shown to be more effective in that specific piece of research. And so this may be intriguing and of interest to you. And so this model is broken down into weeks over six weeks. Let's play some elevator music for you. It is a very fun, yet brutal, yet interesting idea of how you can implement German volume training. And so for this advanced model, you start at a 75% one rep max with these major compound exercises. And as the workouts progress, you increase the intensity and decrease the repetitions. You have 90 seconds rest when the exercises are performed as a sequence. And then you have 90 to 120 seconds rest when you perform those two major exercises as supersetted back to back. Now, to be very clear, I am skeptical when I see this specific form, but this is Poliquin's model for advanced lifters. So let's be clear about that. For me to take this example from Poliquin and communicate it to you would actually be more complex and confusing. And so what I have done is clearly reference the article down below and you can read that free article and you will find a real in-depth breakdown and examples of the complete advanced volume training method. But we're essentially looking at a lower rep, higher intensity protocol where the rest periods are slightly different and the exercise performance is slightly different and similar to the traditional methods we're looking at that slow negative and that explosive positive when you perform the exercises and it'll take 60 days to go through this cycle but essentially what I want to project you through this video is that German volume training is absolutely an interesting idea for you to implement if you want to build muscle however as with everything there are nuances and we can think of ourselves on a training spectrum from beginner to intermediate to advanced lifters and you may adapt how you perform the GVT depending on your specific needs. Stay safe and I wish you good health in this time. I'm James Linker, finished.